Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMadeVince.com and in this video today is another video where I try and fix things around the home. Now I haven't been doing much of these ones recently because I've actually been quite lucky and there's not a huge amount of things gone wrong. But as and when something does go wrong, I film it and then I put them together when I have four or five of them and then I release it into a video. So we're going to start with this one which is just a very simple one and most people would just throw it away. But let's just see if we can fix it. Now. It's probably not worth fixing it if it's gonna take you half an hour, but I'm gonna try different things, and then if it works for me, then you might be able to go straight to that thing. So for example, maybe putting it in a bit of hot water, or I'm gonna try it with a hairdryer, and then you can go straight to that thing, and although it's a kind of very, very, very cheap throwaway item, if it's full of ink, why not try and get it working if you can do it in a couple of minutes? So let's start with this one and then I'm going to work through all the others. So what I'm going to do, as you can see at the moment, it's not doing it here. And even if I take it off the, the mat and do it onto a hard surface, it's, uh, it's not flowing whatsoever. So let's heat it up with a hairdryer and see if that gets the ink going again. Now I'm just using this uh, Glitter Babes pink lovely hair dryer, but hopefully it will work with other hair dryers as well. Now, let's go. Right, okay, so that was probably about a minute or so. Now I was scribbling, oh, here we go. I was about to say I was scribbling on here, but it's not making a difference, but when I go onto here, it does. Look at that. Right, okay, so I can feel it is, uh, it is warm. So you've got to get the heat into the uh, the ink, haven't you? And also I was concentrating a lot of the heat on the tip because if it's gone hard here, basically this pen hasn't actually been used. I found it in uh, a box of old stamps. So this hasn't been used since my eBay days. So I don't think this pen's been used for at least three years now. There you go, look at that, perfect. Right, one pen working again. And you know what? You're going to get a lot of use out of that, so it is worth spending a minute to heat it up on the hairdryer in order to get it to work again. I'm well happy with that. Right, let's move on to the next one. Okay, this next fix is this sink here. I don't know what's happened to it. There's some story about a needle or something fell down it. I've come home and basically this plug is jammed in, and when I push the thing at the back to lift the plug up, nothing's happening. So I don't want to force it, it seems to be kind of really jammed in. So I don't quite know what's going on, but let's zoom in and see if we can find out what's happening. So what I need to do is I need to try to lever this up. Now I'm just going to use my nails because it's such a fine seal. Unless I get something like a very small needle, I'm going to find it hard to get in there. There we go. Just lifted it up a tiny bit, so I should be able to work my nails around it. And then if I get it from a few different angles, it should come out. There we go, excellent. Right, let's see what's happened. So that's separated from there. I've just got some nail clippers here. Let's see if I can get this part out. I think I'm going to have to get some pliers. There should be a screw in there as well, and that's gone missing. So if I had to take a guess, I would say that everything's probably fallen down inside it. This screw going down the middle of there from memory. Well actually the screw should be at the bottom there and that should screw into there I think. Let me get some pliers. Right I've got some pliers now so let's try and get this part out. There you go. Could do it for clean actually. Actually this is a good opportunity to clean in here. It's disgusting down there. Let me get some tissue. Right if you don't like hair look away. Oh god, it's really bad. Oh my god. Oh. Oh wow, there's loads. Actually, there's a lot more caught down low as well. Right, well annoyingly, everything has dropped down completely. So I'm going to have to actually take the trap out because I can't reach it from here. Now I could try fishing around with something longer, but uh, 
there's going to be a screw down there that goes in there and something to do with a needle fell down there. So I'm going to take out the actual trap itself from underneath and then I can work on it, work on it here. So let me get the tripod set up just underneath. Right, okay, I can't get the tripod underneath there, but what I'm going to be undoing is, just doing this by feel for one second now, I'm going to be undoing this one here, and also this one here, yeah? This one. And then that's going to, that's going to release it. So I've got a bit of an old towel just thrown here to gather the water, because when I pull this out, the water in the trap, some of it will there. Uh, I will lose some of it. Now I'm actually thinking, I wonder whether it would be best... Yeah, see I'm going to end up losing the water, there's going to be probably water up to, uh, I don't know, up a little bit higher. So I'm going to end up losing a bit there. But I still think it's going to be easier than I'm doing that one. I've started on doing that, let's try and do this one now. Apologies for the camera angle. But that's undone. And... There we go. Oh, look at all that hair. Oh, disgusting. Oh, you shouldn't really be seeing that. Oh my god. Oh. Well, I'm going to bring this over, obviously not to the sink because it's going to go straight on the floor. I'm going to bring this over to the bath. And now everything should fall out. Whatever's in here should fall out. There you go, that's it there. Right, so I can't find any needle. Maybe a needle wasn't down there, but that's dropped out there. So while I'm here now, I'm going to give that a good clean because you can just see it's all sludged up. Let's go back to here and pull out this thing that looks like a dead rat. Needle might be in this part here. My god, it's completely clogged up. Oh my god, still coming. Wow, okay, well it's gonna definitely drain quicker now, isn't it? Look at that. Disgusting. Right, if I was known it, if I had known it was gonna be so bad I would have wore would have wore gloves. the whole pipe's out now so I might as well just clean the whole pipe. It's come out of the one at the ground at the bottom. Right okay so it's time to get clean it all and now it will drain a lot quicker and it didn't actually smell to be honest with you but if there was any smells you can imagine that it's going to be coming from something like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it a, a good clean up of the tissue to begin with and then get the shower and just hose it all down. Confused. When I say needle, I don't mean like a needle to inject yourself, it would just be like a little sewing needle. In fact, there it is, down the bottom in there. Can you see the metal spike? So let's try and get that out. Yay! Found it. That's it, so let's put that to one side in case I stab myself. Right, I'm going to have to get a shower down to give that all a wash out. Right, okay, they're much cleaner now. There's still going to be bits in this one here, it's very hard to get right the way down inside it, but it's, uh, it's coming out mostly clean now, which is good. Right, let's put all this back together. So let's get this bottom bit in first. There 
There we go. And now let's get the top bit in and then I can make sure that that's pushed down to the correct place. It's going to be very hard to film this. I need two hands now to do it up. So basically what you've seen me do before, I'm just going to do the reverse of that. That's all in the right place. Let me just take the camera off the tripod now and show you. Okay, so from there it just goes down, around, and then just down the pipe into the ground. So let's put this plug mechanism back together. So I have to get this to go through this hole here so I can screw the top onto this bit. Probably a net technique in this, but I don't know what it is, so I'm just trying to kind of balance this and get it through at the same time. There we go, nearly there. I can see it. Yes, excellent. So now I just have to screw the plug onto it. Lift it up, screw it on. There we go. And now the plug's going to operate again. Right, let's try that out. Just take the tripod away. Here we go now, let's see. Yep. Right, so all I have to do now is check for leaks. Right, so I should find that it drains really quick now. Because all that hair would have been slowing it up. Yeah, that's much better. Right, so that's it. I've just got to check for leaks. I don't need to film that bit. If there's any leaks, I'll just have to tighten it up a bit more, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be absolutely fine. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, here we have one of these pull-out beds, and uh, it's got these drawers underneath that you can store stuff in. The problem is the drawers on their own are already quite hard to pull in and out, and then, coupled with the fact that when you've got stuff in there, there's an awful lot of strain on these handles. So really, it should have two handles here and here, like sort of pull handles to pull out. But it just came with these little ones here, and they're just screwed in. And what's happened is now, this no longer uh, grabs onto the, 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 the thread of the screw. So ages ago, I just put a little bit of sellotape round here, which lasted all of around two seconds. So what I'm going to try to do is slightly, a slightly more permanent fix. Now, what I could do is, which I might have to do, is just use a thicker screw. I'm not sure if I'm going to have one or not, but it doesn't need a lot of depth to it because this screw doesn't stick out very far, but it needs to be a lot thicker because obviously now the thread in here has worn because the wood is relatively soft. But what I'm thinking about trying is one of these little pin plugs. Now, these pin plugs, if you haven't heard about these, these are actually really good. So if you're trying to run a cable, for example, down Pebble Dash, then it's a nightmare because every time you try to hammer in a cable cleat, you know, the thing to grip onto the cable, the cable clip, then what happens is it just bends and bounces out and the, the, the nail bends and you're forever trying to do it. So what you do is you drill a five millimeter hole, you put this into the Pebble Dash and it's got a tiny little hole in and then you just hammer the cable clip into there and it works really good. But I'm going to see if it will work on this one here. So I'm just placing it in here. It seems to be a kind of perfect fit. Let me get a hammer and just try to whack it into the middle. Right, okay, so you can see now it's slightly proud, but I'm wondering when it goes in there whether it will all sort of squish out and stuff. So let's give it a go and see what happens. If not, what I'll have to do is I'll have to pull out this pin plug and then I'll have to just uh, cut a bit of it off and hammer it back in. So I'm just gonna take off a little bit of this sellotape. There we go, it's off already. And now I'm gonna try to screw it in and see what happens. Just get my screwdriver. Whoops, 
Now that wasn't very successful, was it? Oh, that's annoying, that is. Now I have to look for another handle. Oh well, do you know what? Sometimes fixes work, and sometimes they go terribly wrong, and this was one that went very, very, very wrong. Right, okay, might as well take that one out. And I've got to try to find uh, another handle from somewhere. That's irritating. Oh well, well look, that's the thing. It's not always successful all of the time. So in hindsight, what I should have done is just used a bigger screw. So the thing that went wrong there is there was uh, too much product here and not enough hole and then it basically it, uh, it split it because it had nowhere else to go. Do you know what? I didn't think that was split quite so easy. Oh well, never mind. So let's see if we can get another handle. Well, okay, now you can go and buy wooden ones, that's not a problem, but I already do have these kind of diamondy, glittery ones, and this is my daughter's room. I had these from ages ago when we were trying to just make some old furniture look nicer, but then that furniture ended up getting uh, uh, changed out when the room was done. So I think I'm just going to go with these. I had quite a few left over. These are still brand new, they've still got their polythene around them. And the good thing about them is they are a machine screw. So a machine screw should, I think, have more, uh, allow you to pull it out with more strength rather than just a wood screw in wood. So let me change these out on all of them and we'll see what it looks like. I think they are actually going to look okay and do you know what I'm hoping that they're going to have more strength so I just have to change there's four of them there's one up here and there's another two over the other side as well so that'll keep me busy for a little bit right there we go all finished and do you know what I'm happy with how they've come out and I'm pretty sure now because it's a machine screw going into a metal thread I think that they will last a lot longer whether they will still last test of time I really don't know ideally I suppose you would need two either side but then it would involve filling the middle I'm gonna run with that for for the time being and I'm thinking that that will definitely last longer than a wood screw into wood you can see it's just a horrible design even just there you, go. you can see it's stuck yeah but I'm happy and I think my daughter would prefer them because if you look they're like kind of more like diamonds rather than uh, just a boring bit of wood do you know what I mean I think they kind of look nice when the light bounces off them. Now you might wonder, like, why do I include failures in the video? I think it's actually quite important to include failures because somebody else might have come up with that idea and then they think, oh yeah, that's a good idea. Then they go to do it and it fails. Now I've actually been sort of fixing things for a long time just around the house and stuff. And obviously I still make mistakes. I still make mistakes all the time. I think it's important to show it because if you're not really used to doing this, you'll look online and on TV and everything's perfect because not a lot of people show their mistakes and then when you go to do it, you, you might think you're a failure. You're not a failure. Sometimes things don't always go right. It's how you overcome it. So for example, I could have moaned and whinged, but I didn't. I just put some other handles on and now I'm more happy with the end result. So if you do something and it doesn't work, don't be disheartened. It's not that you're bad at it, it's just that it might not have been a good idea to do that, and then you'll learn. So now next time, I think, okay, when I'm drilling into wood, or screwing into wood, maybe I should have enlarged that hole. Maybe what I filled it with should have only been a couple of millimetres hole to fill, rather than shoving a lump of plastic in, which is mostly plastic with just a tiny little hole, because obviously the wood can't give much. It's easier to crack than give, especially on very soft wood like this. So that's the reason why I include failures. And I know I do get sometimes grief in the comments saying, oh, you're rubbish, you're rubbish. But you know what? <laughs> Nobody's perfect. And those people that shout out things about your rubbish, it's very easy to be a professional if you just do one thing. So if your job was just, for example, woodwork, then you probably know that inside out. 
But maybe if that woodwork person starts to go and if they try to maybe weld up a car or do a painting or do something outside of their comfort zone, let's see how good they are then. So don't be disheartened by when you do things and they don't work out perfect. That is just life. It's how you overcome it afterwards, which is the important bit. So uh, yeah, that's, that's the reason, just in case you're wondering why I do include failures in my videos. So let's move on to the next one. If you're having problems with sticky windows, check this out. You can hear it's a horrible noise. And as well as that, sometimes it does get stuck and then forces it back down again, so the window kind of jutters. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to put the windows down. I'm going to clean all along the rubber seals there and also up these edges here and up the back edges here. Right, okay, I've been giving it a good clean. You can see the amount of dirt that's come out of it. That used to be white. <laughs> so now if you have a listen, it's getting better, but it's still not perfect. You can still hear a squeak. So now what I have to do is I have to go and buy some silicon spray. So I'm just going to get like the WD-40, but the silicon version of it, not the normal one, because that would just uh, attract dirt over time. And also, I don't know if it's perfectly safe to use in rubber. So I'm going to use a silicon version, and then that will be safe to use in rubber, and it shouldn't attract dirt either. Okay, this is the stuff I bought here, WD-40, and you can see it's the silicon one, and it says on it that it's suitable for metal, plastic, rubber, and wood so it's going to be safe to use on rubber so what I'm going to do is obviously I don't want to make a mess of the car so I'm going to be spraying it on to the cloth here and then I'm going to be rubbing it up and down these bits here and the back bits here and then on this bit here I'm just going to spray it along in the groove here work the window up and down and then afterwards give it all a good clean so I'm just going to do that off camera because I'm just by myself and I can't do it both at the same time right okay I've done it now and check it out Still not perfect, but uh, it's a lot smoother than it was and it's not juddering anymore. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave it at that now. So let's move on to the next one. If you find that your fuel filler cap is full of water, then the drain hole at the bottom's blocked. So get yourself some thin tubing and basically insert it into the hole. and then pull it out and you will see that all the water will drain away. Okay, next up we have this calculator here. Now this hasn't been used in quite a few years and then when I took it out I noticed there was like chalky residue around here. You can still see a little bit just at the bottom here and if I have a look at the back here can you see it looks like it's bulged up and it's not working. It is working. Hold on a minute, it wasn't working. That's because of the solar. So look, if I cover up the solar now, can you see it's not working? So it should work on solar energy, but as well as that, it should also work on uh, battery as well. So let's get it so it also works on the battery. I'm just gonna be wearing gloves because it looks like we're de dealing with leaky batteries. Okay, well it doesn't look bad there. Let's have a look at the other side of it. Well, it doesn't really, uh, that hasn't really, that hasn't leaked at all. I wonder what the chalky residue was then. Maybe it just needs a new battery. It was just, I'm gonna take this apart because there was so much uh, chalky residue here, I thought it leaked all the way through. Let's open this up and see what the inside looks like. Probably just needs a new battery. A little bit of corrosion there. Can you see just there? But nothing compared to what was on the front of it. It isn't really made to be taken apart because you can see that there's gonna be holes here and they've kind of uh, put the plastic through and then basically crushed it down again so I'd have to break each of them in order to get this off. But I don't think now, looking at the corrosion here, that it was anything to do with the thing at the front and I think I know what it is. I'm having a look at that there, have a look here, can you see there's a white bit and it's flaky, look, did you see that? 
I'll tell you what that is, I know now, it's flour. So basically the weighing scales was kept on top of the shelf near this. So what's obviously happened is, somebody's been weighing out pancakes or something with flour, and then the bits of flour have come down and fallen onto it. Right, while I'm here, I'm just gonna just get a little bit of white vinegar just to clean up that corrosion, and that's, let's see if I've got a, a spare battery to pop into it. Right, so I'm just gonna spray some white vinegar on it. The reason I'm doing this is because the battery will be an alkaline, so you're gonna need an acid to try to neutralize it. I'm just gonna put a tiny, tiny little bit on it. Right, that's it, so I'm gonna close this up again and then I'm just gonna give the whole thing a clean with a little wet wipe just to clean it up a little bit. Just gonna make sure that there's no dust on the screen here. And just clean the inside here, it looks a bit dirty. Right, okay, so now let's just give the outside all a clean up. So the reason that this was bulging then isn't because of the leaking battery. It must have just been, I don't know, maybe the way I took it off before, or maybe I dropped it or something. It also looks slightly cracked. So it was a case of mistaken identity there. Okay, so let's put a new battery in. So what I've got is my Pound Shop Special. So every now and then I just buy all these I call them watch batteries, but there's these tiny little cells here, just from the pound shop. They're not good quality at all, but you know, they're so cheap, and sometimes they do last a year or a couple of years, so they're not actually as bad as you might think they are. But sometimes you can get ones that are leaking already before you even put them in, or they can be duds. So this is the broken one here, let's just measure that. Right, so that's showing 1.4 volts. Let's have a look at this one here. 1.54, hmm, okay. Okay, so that's in nice, let's just pop the back on. That's it, locked into place again. Not great, that. Right, let's see what's happening. Let's cover up the solar, turn it on. There we go, on, and I'm completely covering that up. Two times eight equals 16. Four times nine, 36. There we go, so uh, yeah, not the best fix in the world, but still a fix, and you see how easy it is to fix these things around the home. So yes, you're not gonna save yourself much money because you can get this for probably one or two pounds, but it's the hassle of going out to buy another one when you might not need to by simply just changing a battery. Or, if it was badly corroded, using some vinegar, I know that wasn't the case in this instance, it was me getting it wrong, but a bit of white vinegar on that will stop it getting eroding anymore, and a lot of the time by just cleaning it up, using a bit of sandpaper to get the contacts back to something that resembles metal, then you can fix loads of things. Leaky batteries cause so many problems, but it's actually a lot of the times very easy to fix. And in some cases, you can even buy new springs and stuff like that if it's too far gone to fix it. So that is it. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care. Bye now.